Hey journey mates, if you are struggling with clarity, productivity, or motivation, it might be time to go on a fast. So let's get straight into this video. I'm super excited to share some of the benefits of fasting and any resources I can offer. But if you have questions, I will be checking in with this video. So put your questions down below and I'll respond as I'm able to, all right? So for those of you who might be new to this channel, hello, I am Coach B. I'm a biblical wellness coach as well as a minister. Um, and so biblical wellness meaning stop, get out of the trash. Um, you really pulled that out? Put it back. I'm sorry, y'all. As soon as I start recording, my dog cuts up, right? And so he just went into the trash and pulled out a paper towel. For what? I don't know because he thought I was busy. That's why, but I can still see him. <laughs> anyway, um, biblical wellness is simply getting your health together with Jesus first, right? Because God has... Um, a blueprint of what he wants us to follow when it comes to taking care of our bodies. I'm looking around because I will be starting a Zoom Bible study. If this is something that you are interested in, if you're trying to draw closer to the Lord and um, get your health together because it's essential to thriving in your calling and being able to be fruitful and being able to glorify God, you know, and allow him to be made visible to others, not just through what we say and share, but how we live. So if you're interested, go to the link down below it should be a link tree link um and if you copy and paste the link tree link and sign up for our gluttony workshop whether it has or has not passed i'll get your email because i have not created a, a form for you to sign up for the bible study so we'll use the gluttony form and that gives me your email and so when i start to reach out to people to introduce the new um, bible study that goes into wellness you'll be on the email list and you can join um we'll be meeting via zoom if i didn't say that already so let's get into fasting so this entire year um god has been moving um through through fasting really like i want to say a couple things he's done he's been delivering me of um demonic influences also delivering me from trauma right because those are two different things um being oppressed by a spirit is not the same as just having the trauma that creates the room for the spirit to come in or the mindset for the spirit to attach itself to when you come into agreement. Um, it's also helped with being fruitful in a business that has not quite seen the level of success that makes it a real business. <laughs> That's a humble way of saying it, ain't it? That's a nice way of saying a humble thing. That's what I meant to say. Um, but you catching what I'm putting down, right? So to continue in faith despite seeing the fruit, fasting has helped with that immensely. Fasting has helped with clarity and having strategy as to what God wants me to do um, in the ministry as well as the business. From marketing into product creation and Bible study outlines, you name it, fasting has helped with that process. Fasting has also helped me die to self in a serious way. From everything, from gluttony, right, overeating, emotional eating, bored eating, to being kind and honoring to people who aren't necessarily kind and honoring to me, right? Um, so fasting helps on so many levels. I wanted to put that out to share that. Um, now you might be thinking, how long should I go on a fast? Um, duration, I would suggest three days, three days, three days, three days. And I'm referring to the Esther fast when I say that, um, but also the Daniel fast when I say that, because Daniel went on a fast for 21 days, which was three weeks. It was three, four weeks. In fact, if you go to Daniel 10, I'm not sure what verse, Daniel 10, two to three, he said that in those days, I, Daniel was mourning three, four weeks, threes, 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 threes. I ate no pleasant food nor meat or wine into my mouth nor did i anoint myself at all so three whole weeks were fulfilled there's that number three 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 then esther i'm not going to read the whole thing but if you want to read about esther's situation read the the full chapter of esther four if you want to learn more about daniel's situation read the full chapter of daniel 10. um but scrolling down to esther's fast I have a lot of verses from Esther, so give me one because I want to find the number. Go gather all the Jews who are present in 
Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days and nights, night or day. My bridesmaid and I will like will fast likewise. I'm struggling with reading, but you get the grass the grass that it is three days. So fast for three days. I've been um seeking God about that and the understanding that I have is day one is about getting your flesh under subjection. Your flesh is your body, your physical body, the thing that is going to pass. Um in the earth right the dust the dirt that you come from this physical body has its own appetites and its own desires so day one is just bringing your flesh under subjection the inflammation of your flesh back to like no we submit to god and i tell you what to do you don't tell me what to do okay the second day really helps you in the soulish realm your soul is your mind will and your emotion so day two your 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 soul is brought back to god and under the subjection of god right because a lot of times our emotions uh our willpower not in alignment with the will of God leads the show, right? And so you come into procrastination. You come into a war between your soul and your spirit because your soul is at war with God at all times, right? Unless it's under the subjection to God is trying to wrestle up and puff up against God. So day two brings your soul up under subjection. And this isn't standard for everybody. You could go through all phases in one day, but bear with me okay like we got to start somewhere then day three you're really operating in the spirit day three is when you begin to feel the relief you don't have as much hunger pains you don't have as much cravings um you're, you're you're able to settle in with the fact that you're fasting and you're seeking god you know um you you, you become I'm not going to say that you don't want to eat food because you might want to eat food, but the cravings, the, the intensity, the intensity of it, it's just not as severe um, because your body, your soul has gotten to the place of like, okay, the Holy Spirit is leading the show. All right. And so we just got to chill and you have now learned how to not entertain those thoughts as much. And you, you know, by day three, you begin to see the benefits of the fast, um, some fruit of the fast. In most cases, some fast the entire time you're dealing with spiritual warfare. I have dealt with that. Um, but you will see a shift in the spiritual realm, regardless of what's going on in the natural and regardless of what's going on in the spiritual. Um, even if you're fasting for deliverance. Um, so I hope this was helpful. I don't want to make super long videos, but I wanted to begin this conversation and give you Bible verses to anchor on as you um, go into your fast. You might have some questions like, should I prep for it? There are certain fasts where you just need to go on the fast. And if you're like mature in the Lord, just go on the fast, right? Like he'll equip you and edify you as you go, but just stop. You know what I'm saying? Say tomorrow morning or tonight, whatever. I got to stop eating because my flesh is getting me to the point where I'm going to go back to sin. My flesh is getting me to the point where I am tempted beyond measure, right? And God always gives us a way of escape. And for many of us, fasting is the beginning of that way of escape. Because it's like, I'm a pause. And I'm going to feed my spirit, man, right? I'm going to be in the word of God. I'm going to be in the face of God throughout this fast. I'm going to be resting in God throughout this fast. If you cannot take off of work, totally get it. But Isaiah 58 gives you a blueprint of how to and not to fast. So if you must be around people, if you must continue with the day to day throughout the day, that's fine. But still honor God, right? Mind what you say, mind what you do, mind your heart posture. You're not out here gossiping. You're not out here complaining. You're not out here being negative. You're not out here entertaining the negative. You need to separate, right? And if you must be around it, you need to separate mentally and emotionally, meaning you don't entertain it. You don't allow it to take up root, right? Because you're trying to allow the Lord to cleanse things up out of you and from around you, you know, from influencing you. So accepting more as he's releasing, you're just replenishing the stock of negativity. You're, you're being set free from. It makes no sense. Kind of sort of does it. All right. So um, the Bible verses reference um, is Daniel chapter 10, Esther chapter 4, and um, Isaiah 58 to give you a blueprint on how to fast always go to your clinical advisor. Um, fasting helps with breaking free from addictions. Fasting helps with getting clarity on whatever you need clarity from. Um, Daniel 
it, it's really helpful with understanding that our supernatural help comes when we're fasting right like esther was fasting for a breakthrough for for her people right like the king put out some type of decree or law that all jews men women old young will be murdered slaughtered right and then all of the stuff that they had will be plundered and so mordecai sent a letter he's like a i think he's esther's uncle he was a caretaker for esther um who became the wife of the king so he sends a letter and they're going back and forth and he's saying hey you you have to speak up for us and if you don't speak up for us god something is going to happen to to protect the jews right you won't be in the midst of that you'll get caught up because you won't be protected if you don't rise up maybe you're in this situation because you were chosen for a time such as this and so she says okay everybody fast i'll fast with my maid servants and then she was able to go see the king and he allowed her to come into his court because there was a law that if you went to go see the king without him calling you and he did not put out his like golden staff or something like that to welcome you that you will be murdered so the fast gave her favor to even be welcomed into the king king's court and also for him to move on the behalf of her people right so that was supernatural help because something had to work in the hearts and the mind of the king for esther to have the breakthrough for her people to have the breakthrough same thing we see with daniel he needed to seek god about certain things and understanding but it took 21 days for the angel that was coming to him to get to him because he was held up by spiritual principalities from persia right um so the help is coming but again you might not get that help day one because because there are things going on in the atmosphere around you but also it might be things going on in your heart you know sometimes it is our heart that defiles us and keeps us um from being able to hear god clearly from being able to yield to god from moving in a way that draws god and um his 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 messengers to us right Daniel was already a righteous man. He was already um, yielded to the father, right? So when he went on fast, I'm sure his flesh and, you know, his soul had to be reconciled to a decree, but maybe not as much as yours does. Does that make sense? So you might need more time for your flesh and your soul to come into the righteousness for God to move on behalf of your prayers, right? Or for, you know, the angels that are coming to you, the messengers that are coming to you, the supernatural support that is coming to you to be able to get to you. But three days is a good start. Um, you don't have to fast the entire day. In the beginning, I will fast until maybe one o'clock or three o'clock. Then I will begin to fast until 6 p.m. 9 p.m. the full day right um if you're able you know to fast the entire day that's fine like that's awesome um but we can start where we are god's grace is sufficient it's not about perfection and like legalism it's about really wanting to god you call me to be set apart <laughs> I'm seeking you because I, I want you to get the glory out of my life. I want to please you and I don't quite know how or I'm doing things that just disable me from pleasing you or I'm being uh, triggered and, and, and riled up in a way that I know is displeasing to you and it's keeping me. It's keeping me distracted and expect opposition while you fast. Expect temptation while you fast and handle it prayerfully in the Lord. You know, food might get offered to you. Drama might come to you, but God's grace is sufficient. Okay, I went in like round two of this video, but I felt led to do it. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you have friends that need to fast or they're asking questions about fasting or they're dealing with procrastination or distraction, send them this video. With this, be encouraged and I'll see you and sign up for the Gluttony Workshop if you want help breaking free from bondage to food or you um, you want to join the Bible study, the, the, the Biblical Wellness Bible study. I'll see you then.